it's quite possible that your spirit guides are having you watch this video right now. Hi everyone, this is Diana Palm from dianapalm.com and today I'm here to do a really special interview with spirit artist Lonnie Palm. She's also my daughter, she's a well-known medium and she's known all over the world basically for her art. She's sold her spirit guide paintings in many different countries and today I actually wanted to do a really nice at-home interview with Lonnie but one that she can actually help teach you how to connect better and more clearly with your own spirit guide so that you can get spirit guide names, you can meet your spirit guide team, and you can actually benefit from having more contact and a better relationship with your own spirit guides. So if that sounds good to you and you wanna learn from one of the best in the industry, then follow me, come on inside as we go in to speak with Lottie Palm right now. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, babies. Hi. Okay. Thanks for having me, Mom. Thank you for coming. Oops. Are we going to go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Right up there. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll just follow you. All right. I got something to drink. Do you want to come out and join me? Yeah. Thank cool. you. This is great. I love your space here. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> it's plenty of sunlight out here too. It's really nice. We've got the trees. Yes. Everyone wants to connect with their spirit guide team and yeah. get more familiar with them. So I wanted to ask you some questions that could really help them get their own connection. Okay. Um, but before we do that, can you just give us like a little bit of background on you? Like how long have you been doing this? Oh gosh, I've been doing this since 2012, I want to say. Um, I've been reading for people um, pretty much my whole life, but ever since my mom really started taking classes and like having her own classes, I kind of just fell into it. And being able to read people's spirit guides has come like very naturally to me. So it's something that I connect with kind of without really even having to try to. It's really, it's really great. So I like to be able to do that for people. Were spirit guides the first spirits you ever encountered? Um, I don't think so. I think I saw spirits first, um, but I was very young, so I don't really remember much of that. And then as I got older, it's kind of like learning how to train your brain. Because I think everybody can connect, you know, to that sort of energy. But as I got older, I learned how to train it and be able to connect with higher energies. Okay, so yeah. there's a difference between connecting with, like, say, a ghost in a house. Yes. Okay, or, yes. like, dark energies. Yes, spirit so guides are more of the light. They're kind of on the other side. Um, they're just here to help us and make things easier for us. Okay, so you've yeah. never encountered anything negative. It's always positive when you connect with spirit No, um, it really depends on the person. Sometimes people come with their own energies that are attached to them. If I see them in a reading, I will clear them because nobody wants that hanging around. But um, those are not spirit guides. Spirit guides are always of the light. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. So yeah. everyone should feel very safe. So I'd like yes. to actually, would you mind taking us into you? Um, your room or yeah. your special space and just show us how you prepare. Yes. For, okay, awesome. Of course, come follow me. So this is generally where I do most of my readings. It might seem kind of weird that it's like a bedroom because it is a bedroom. Um, but this is like very much my space, you know, I feel very comfortable in here. I feel very artistic in here. As you can see, I've already got a painting in the corner that's being worked on. This is actually wow. a commissioned work. Um, kind of like a goddess energy that's being created. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Like you don't mind if I No, go ahead. Wow. I love it So that's in the works. You're working on her. That is in the works. I got another one here in the corner Interesting. That one's not everywhere. mine, but that was a gift and that's okay. very inspiring for me But this one's mine as well Love it. Thank you Yeah, and then everything else pretty much except for the one above my bed is mine so yeah, got my art stuff over here, as you can see, <laughs> my palette. So, uh, so so we didn't actually talk about that. Yeah. Um. So tell. So after you have connected with someone's spirit guide, mm -hmm. so then you're able to paint them. Yeah. So essentially, what I do when I connect is that I actually I do see them, and the cool part about being able to connect with them and being able to see them is that I can actually I have the skill to be able to paint. So I think um, seeing your guide and being able to connect with them in a way that's much more personal you know it feels very face-to-face -face. 
um, is a really great way for you to build that connection with yourself, with your team, and with kind of building your future and the life that you want to have. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're um, many, many, many people in many countries now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. have your paintings of their own spirit guides. They do, yeah. Their own individual spirit guides, which is so cool. I've actually lost track of how many that I've done over the years, and um, I feel very blessed to be able to do it because it's utilizing two different skills that I... I've always seen as being two very separate things, but being able to kind of combine them and create something completely unique is really, um, really cool for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone has their own team, right? Yes. Yep. Every team is completely unique. Um, I always say no two guides are alike, uh, which I think is really wonderful. Everybody has their own individual guide. Some people like to connect and be like, is Cleopatra with me? <laughs> and I'm like, girl, no, <laughs> let me tell you. Cause whoever comes through is going to come through. And I trust that whatever I see is what meant to be, it's what's meant to be um, shown and communicated. So. so can you show us what you would do so that the viewers watching, if they want to start connecting with their spirit guides, that yeah. they would have some basic how to prepare and get their kind of their mind or energy in the right headspace. And... I can kind of tell you what I do. Can um, you show us? Yeah. So okay. I have this um, salt lamp over here. I always have that on. I feel like it just kind of like boosts the energy in the room. It makes everything feel brighter and more happy. And um, also I've got my little corner over here. But yeah, generally I'll light my incense. As you can see, I burn quite a bit of it. Um, I feel like that kind of like lifts the space of the room. I've got my crystals here. I've got crystals that I actually enjoy wearing that I had kind of just charging over here. So I like to wear my quartz oh, yeah. and my garnet, which is my birthstone. And then I've got some plants. Do you use any specific incense when you're when you're doing these? I no. You must have been busy. Look at this busy week. Yeah, it was a busy <laughs> week. I just use the one that I feel drawn to. I really, you know, it's whatever works for you is going to work for you. And I feel like you should go with that. Okay. Yeah. No favorites? Um, I currently am really liking sage. Um, I actually have a sage incense that I really like. There's a goddess one and a prosperity one. I think I have prosperity in here. But I don't know the brand of it, but, uh, uh, Nitourage? I don't know how to say that, okay, but that's the brand. show everybody which one you're using. Yeah. Okay. Let's, so that's Prosperity. Let's, that's the one that was burning in here earlier, actually. Oh, it smells really, really good, actually. And then so. I've got Sage. Very nice. Okay, same, same brand. Same brand. I love this brand, actually, because it, it burns for a whole hour. Oh, wow. So it's pretty good quality. Um, I also okay. have some cheaper stuff, but I kind of just do that for like daily. And then I got my sage, actual oh, sage. Yes. <laughs> and that's more of like a special occasion kind of thing. Um, I've got a few roommates here that I'm very good friends with, but uh, when you live in a house with four women, witchy things tend to happen, which means uh, ghosts and uh, different energies. So we have saging parties regularly, and that's always very fun. <laughs> okay, and you use that to clear the home, obviously. We do, yes. Just to keep all the energy clear so everyone's on the up and up with each other. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Such a good point to bring home if people are living in multi- family I will just multi-person households right yeah. everyone brings home their own stuff yes and people tend to be like oh you live with like a bunch of other women and I'm like yeah it's like amazing I live with like this community of sisters kind of and um we just really all have each other's backs and we're really good at communicating and it's it's like literally like ideal it's great I love it yeah very much of a girl powerhouse here <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah Okay, is there anything else to you? Like, where do you sit? Where's Lonnie's place when you're connecting with the guys? Because you mostly do your work on the phone. I do. Yeah, I do most of my readings on the phone. And that's just because most of my clients are out of the area or out of the country. And also, I think it's a lot easier. Um, the cool thing about connecting with spirit is that spirit is everywhere. You know, it's not defined by space and time. It's kind of like here and now and all the time and everywhere. So um, when I do my readings, I tend to sit in this chair, which I can move my paint and stuff. <laughs> Don't. Well, look at the paints. <laughs> I need to get to those. Just that's the messy part. Um, but I'll sit here. I'll light a candle. I'll have my incense burning. Okay. Normally I'll have coffee with me. Or maybe some wine, depending on what time you call me at. Or I call you, actually. That's important to know. I call you. Um, but yeah, I'll sit here and I'll talk with you on the phone. and. That's awesome. So we can kind of picture where Lani is in her magical room. Yeah. And she's connecting with all your spirit. And you got dream catcher. I do. And... Such positive vibe room full of <laughs> art and amazing stuff and your energy. Yeah. And um, Lonnie has like an amazing crystal clear connection, which we've discussed. And 
and her along with her ability to paint. Do you have any spirit guide paintings here or that we can put a link to them? Um, yeah, put a link to them. I'm actually in the middle of sketching one right now, but it hasn't, when I say middle of being sketched, it like hasn't been sketched. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I tend to, um, for me, the process is kind of like a back and forth a little bit. Like I like to let the energy sit for a while and then come back to it. If somebody does want to have you connect with their spirit guides for them and do a painting so they have their original spirit guide, how do they contact you for that? So basically you can contact me on my Facebook page or through email and then just send me a private message. Let me know like, Hey, like I'm available these dates and times. What does your schedule look like? And we'll find a day and time that works best for you. And then uh, we'll work from there. Okay. And how long does it usually take for them to get their painting afterwards? Two to three weeks. Okay. Yeah. Because you like that to just be kind of a natural process. You don't hurry them. Yes. I do not rush the paintings. Um, I've learned rushing the paintings, actually. I don't want to lose any quality of work. And I also want to make sure that I have the clearest connection possible to make sure that what I am seeing is being accurately translated onto the actual painting itself. So if I feel like if I do it too quickly, I feel like you lose some of that. So, okay, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so show us what you would do. Like, do you close your eyes? Do you go, how do you get your connection? Yeah, um, I'll probably hold a crystal. I'll call you, I'll have a phone in one hand and a crystal in the other, and um, I'll prop my feet up probably. And uh, yeah, I'll have my eyes closed. <laughs> That's about it. So this is where she does it. This is it, this is the okay. behind the scenes magic. Okay. <laughs> So what advice do you have for people that are doing this at home that want yeah. to connect with their spirit guides to get their names? What's the easiest way to get a spirit guide name? To listen. Listen. Have the intention. Uh, make sure that you're connected very strongly to spirit. Um, no distractions. Um, and just keep your ears open. Just listen. You're not going to hear it audibly. Uh, maybe you will. If you do, props to you because that'd be really cool. Um, but it should just come to you really naturally. So when you say that it should come to you, how do you mean? Uh, it's kind of, the best way that I can explain it is almost like how you can hear things in your dreams but you're not actually hearing it. It's kind of the same way. You're hearing it but you're not actually hearing it. It's coming to you in a different sort of way. So what if somebody doesn't trust their intuition because this is new for them? Is there any other technique that you could say that they could use to help get their spirit guide name? Meditation, for sure. Uh, meditate, build that spiritual strength, build that um, intuition for sure. Um, teaching yourself how to trust yourself is extremely important, especially when you're connecting with spirit. Um, your body is a tool. It is the best utensil for connecting with the other side, mm -hmm. um, with spiritual energies, and learning how to trust that as like an indicator of, of what you're reading is going to be really, really helpful for you. If there's somebody listening right now that really wants to know their spirit guide names, yeah and meet their team, um, but they don't know, they're, they haven't developed their intuition, they don't know how to trust their gut feeling or anything like that yet, Sure. what is another way that they can figure out who their guides are? Uh, well, your guides are really good at sending you signs and signals, uh, especially when you start opening up that pathway of you know, wanting to communicate with them. They're gonna start trying to communicate and reaching back out to you as well, so like hearing the name on the radio, um, seeing license plates, um, getting signs and signals, maybe like your spirit guide's name is Rose. Someone's going to be sending you roses. You're going to hear the name Rose. There's going to be songs about roses on the radio. But it's going to be put in your path so that you have to pay attention to it. It's not going to seem like it's a coincidence. It's going to be like very much like, why did that become pointed out to me today? Like, how come that was standing out to me? And that's kind of more of a sign for you to kind of pay attention to. So you're probably going to be more connecting to um, the energies as soon as you start opening up that pathway for yourself. Okay, great, because that's, yeah. that's something everybody can do. Yeah. And all you have to do then is just pay attention. Yes. And as you're getting the signs. Be open to it. Yeah, just be open. And then yeah. as that grows, you probably increase your intuition yes. and your connection with that. Absolutely. The more that you pay attention to it and the more that you acknowledge it, the more they're going to reciprocate and continue to send you energies. How many guides do we typically have? Uh, everyone's different. Uh, I've communicated with people that have had like 20 guides at once and I feel like when that happens they're going through a very large life cycle or life circumstance. Um, on average about it's about five or six. And okay. uh, when I connect I tend to connect with one or two. Um, whoever I feel like you most need to hear from at that time and they tend to kind of like sort themselves out and then one or two will step forward for the reading. Okay, and then do they all have the same purpose or? No, 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 no. The best way that I can describe it is that we all have a main team that's with us and that's like the five or six. 
Um, we also have guides that step in through our lives that act as sort of teacher guides and they'll kind of step in when they're helping us through a very specific life goal or process. Maybe you're doing an apprenticeship or if you've lost a loved one even, a specialized guide will help you through that grieving process. Um, and they kind of step in as more of a temporary role, but that doesn't make them any less or more important actually. Um, I always like to say that no one guide is more important than the other. They're all there for a very specific reason and purpose. They're all here to help you. Uh, so yeah, yeah, they're all extremely, extremely important. Okay. And then what's the one biggest piece of advice you can give to somebody that's new that really, really has a strong will to connect with their spirit guide? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There Just you go. Do it. <laughs> do it. I mean, everybody has the power. Everybody can do it, you know? Um, I'm not special in any way. Every single person has this ability. I would just say, sit down and it's just like drawing, you know, I didn't learn how to draw overnight, but I sat down and I drew every day and now I can paint. So kind of do the same thing. So practice, practice, practice. Yes. Okay. But everybody can do it. I agree. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much for your time, Lonnie. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I can walk you out. <laughs> okay. Good.